Hey everyone and welcome to the second part of designing wireframes using DesignKit and Figma. In this video I will show you how to create some content pages, use input fields and add annotations to your designs. Okay so here is my homepage wireframe I created in the previous video and now let's create a sample content page that could be used uh, as a blog article. First, I'm going to copy my existing page and rename the label here to article. Now I can select all the middle page sections and delete them as I won't need them on this page. Okay, and now I'm going to modify the hero section. So it shows my article title and the date. I want to keep it very simple in this video but feel free to use a completely different content section and add any other elements here. I'm changing the text style uh, for the headline to H1, so it's bigger. I can also resize this box a little bit more, so I have more room for the, for the long headline. And I think I can leave it as this. Okay, now I need my main content area. I'm going to take it from the content blocks page. And here, as you can see, you can find all the typical content elements like headings, paragraphs, black quotes, and more. And they are very similar to the standard blocks you can find in WordPress Gutenberg editor. Also, I already have a pre-made entry content section with all of these elements inside. So you can simply copy the entire section and paste it back to your new page. And as you can see, everything fits on the page as it's using the exact dimensions. And thanks to the outer layout in this section, you can easily reposition elements using arrows on your keyboard. And all of these elements already have before and after spacing applied to the master components, so it's super easy to control that from one place. For some of these elements, like headings, you can also use variants to change styles from H1 to H2 or 3 um, also, you can add more content blocks in between those elements, like images or galleries, by simply copying and pasting them into this entry content section. Okay, now let's make the same changes to the mobile view of my article page. I'm going to simply copy the text from the desktop wireframe to mobile. Hold shift when you paste the text to a new field to make sure you copy only the content and not the text styles. We want the mobile textiles in these wireframes here. Next, I want to also copy the mobile entry content and paste it here below the hero section instead of the, all the previous content sections. All right, and now let me show you how to design a sample contact page wireframe with a form. Again, I'm copying my homepage as a template to begin with. And I want to remove all of these middle content sections and drop a contact form section from wireframe components. So I will go to assets and now I need to find the contact form section. Okay, that looks pretty good as is, but let's make some changes here. So first I want to detach it from the master component. And now let's say I want to add some fields. So I'm going to select this row of fields and I'm going to duplicate it. And I want to add a website field here. So when you look at the input field component, you will see that it's made of multiple subcomponents that come with their own variants. Okay, let's look at the start component here. This is the icon or text before the input field. So you can select it and now choose a different variant. So let's switch it to text. And as you can see, that changed it to HTTP text by default, but you can easily change it to anything else. So that looks good and I will finally remove the placeholder from this field and this is my website field. And input fields also come with some pre-designed common templates like date, email, credit card, search and more. So choosing one of those options will automatically set up inner elements like icons or placeholder text. So you can always start with one of those uh, pre-made input field templates and still adjust any variants here by changing uh, if you wanted to show the after message, you want to show label or you want to switch some icons. 
For example, let's say I want to turn this field into a budget question. I can simply change the icon to currency, edit the label and placeholder text by double clicking on the text while holding command. And we can even turn it into a drop down field by turning on the end icon variant. Okay, now the final step in my wireframing process is adding any type of annotations and arrows to explain my thinking process to my clients. So I'm going to open assets and then design kit section. From here, I can drag and drop the annotation component on the page, place it next to my wireframe, double click on the text to edit it. Annotations also come with some variants, so you can easily change the color and orientation. Just make sure all of your annotations stay outside the page frames and on top of all of your designs, so they are clearly visible. You can hold the spacebar while moving all of your elements if you don't want them to fall into any of those frames automatically. All right, and from here I can duplicate my annotations, add some numbers if I want to explain certain elements in my email or video. Additionally, you can use arrows to show user flows from one wireframe to another. It may not be as easy to use it on full page wireframes, but it can be really helpful to show some micro flows uh, when you want to present like registration or checkout process. Finally, we have some section components too, which are great to uh, quickly mark a part of your page and name it for your clients. They're coming with different variants as well, so you can easily make them bigger or smaller. All right, that prepared uh, wireframes should be ready to copy to your preview file and send it to your client for some feedback. And that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you for watching. And in the next video, I will show you my process of turning all of those wireframes we just created into final page mockups.